Hello students, today we are going to discuss about one more topic of your unit number one, which is introduction to microbial diversity. In this unit, one more important topic is microbial evolution and microbial diversity. This topic deals with the types of microorganisms in view of taxonomy and how they are evolved from prokaryotic to eukaryotic microorganism especially with the reference to evolution of mitochondria and chloroplasts. It has been estimated that our planet is near about 4.6 billion years old. The fossils which we are having uh, from prokaryotic cell, they are found to be 3.5 to 3.8 billion years old. That means that the immediately after few billion years, the first life form has originated on planet Earth after formation. The current fossilized prokaryotic cells are found in the form of stromatolite and sedimentary rock. So what are stromatolites? Stromatolites are layers of stratified rocks, often dome shaped, and they are formed by incorporation of mineral sediment into the microbial mat means the microorganism which grow in the form of a net or filament and when they die and settle, they settle with the minerals and they form a rock and they are called a stromatolite. Modern stromatolites which are found, they are having cyanobacteria as a microbial mat. Uh, it is very much clear that in early environment, the earth environment did not have any free oxygen. So the organism which were found at that time were to be anaerobic in nature and maybe lithotrophic in nature. Cyanobacteria must have evolved after the production of free oxygen that is O2. Uh, but um, the current stromatolite which we, uh, we are having, they are having cyanobacteria and pres uh, presumably at least some fossilized stromatolite are found to be formed in the same way the uh, old stromatolite which were formed. Thus prokaryotic life could have arose very shortly after the formation of Earth when the gaseous level is uh, cooled down and converted into vaporized or liquid form. Immediately the first prokaryotic uh, life form must have originated. Very likely that the earliest prokaryotes were anaerobic as we have discussed because there was no uh, oxygen or molecular oxygen available in the free form. Cyanobacteria which and other oxygenic producing photosynthetic uh, bacteria must have evolved after uh, much later time near about 2.5 to 3 billion years or maybe more. Uh, here in figure you can see the imprint of the fossilized microorganism found in the uh, net of the stromatolite. The structure is quite resembling to the filamentous structure of a, a prokaryotic bacteria. Generally, they are having a cellular similarity of cyanobacteria. Now, these are the modern stromatolites which are found in at many places. This is the picture which is showing the stromatolite present in the uh, Shark Bay of the Western Australia. The chemical analysis showed that they are the layer stratified rock formed by incorporation of calcium sulfate, calcium carbonate, and other insoluble mineral into the microbial mat. And this could be the you know, first reason of the formation of life. And these are the proof of that. The studies of Carl Boos and his co-worker uh, by studying the sequences of 15S rRNA in prokaryotic cells suggest that the total microorganism can be divided in two distinct groups depending upon the cellular morphology that is prokaryote and eukaryote. But uh, they have given a universal phylogenetic tree and they have divided this microorganism in three main domains that is bacteria, archaea and eukarya. While bacteria and archaea are coming under the category of prokaryotes and eukarya are eukaryotic in nature, uh, generally, uh, people have an idea that because bacteria and archaea are prokaryotic, so uh, they have diverged uh, from each other, but actually uh, eukarya and archaea share many relationships. 
so it has been found out that in early time, archaea and bacteria must have diverged and then the eukarya have evolved. Uh, this is the universal phylogenetic tree proposed by Carl Bruce. And uh, there are three main domains that is bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Bacteria and archaea, along with some symbiotic relationship, they have converted into mitochondria and chloroplast. And this is how the uh, eukaryotes must have evolved. Here in a, in a tree, you can see that the in early time of evolution, bacteria and archaea have diverged, and from archaeal lineage, eukarya must have evolved. Uh, there are three primary groups, or you can say domain, which are placed above the kingdom or phylum uh, in the classification. Uh, the domain is eukarya, archaea, and bacteria. Eukaryotic organism with preliminary weak like glycerol, fatty acid, diester membrane in the lipid and eukaryotic rRNA belong to the eukarya. The bacteria or the organism which are in bacterial domain contain prokaryotic cells. Their rRNA is of a bacterial uh, type and the lipids are having diacyl glycerol diester in the chemical composition. Even archaea are prokaryotic in nature but they are quite different from bacteria. First difference is naturally they are having archaeal rRNA which has got different uh, conserved sequences or conserved structures than the bacteria and the membrane is having diether linkage rather than the ester linkage between the glycerol and fatty acid. So these are the two key features which separate two pro prokaryotic group. One is bacteria and another one is archaea. Archaea are considered to be a more ancient organism than the bacteria. Uh, because of their adaptation to the uh, harsh environment, which is likely to be present in the early Earth. It appears likely that modern eukaryotic cells have evolved from prokaryote about 1.5 billion years ago. There has been considerable speculation about how eukaryote might have developed from prokaryotic ancestors. There are a lot of many theories proposed by scientists, but two solid theories which has been uh, put on the platform are the genome fusion hypothesis and the endosymbiotic origin. Uh, some proof, uh, some evidences uh, support the first theory and some support the second theory, but rather uh, the actual hypothesis uses both the uh, fundamental and proves to be evolution of eukaryote from the prokaryotic cell. And the first theory says that due to the invagination of plasma membrane, the uh, internal membrane structure like nuclei, mitochondria and chloroplast have formed into the prokaryotic cell and finally they are converted into double membrane structure which contain genetic material and each organelle is specialized to perform specialized function. The similarity between the mitochondria and chloroplast with modern bacteria uh, does not uh, fully support the first theory that is membrane uh, invagination theory. Rather, a new theory has been put forward and that is called endosymbiotic theory. This theory, the fundamental of this theory was first proposed by Lynn Mergulis and his colleague combining the element of endosymbiotic origin of mitochondria with genome fusion hypothesis and collectively the theory is called serial endosymbiotic theory which calls for the development of eukaryote in a series of discrete endosymbiotic steps. As it is not all of a sudden evolution, it takes years to evolve from one organism to the other organism. The theory says that the early large cell produced due to the fusion of a two prokaryotic cell. Finally, due to the membrane invagination, a discrete nuclei has been uh, formed, and uh, the two different types of endosymbiotic bacteria one is photosynthetic, and another one is aerobic fermentative organism. They started residing into this large uh, pre cell, and finally, they have lost their individual. Uh, organism status and converted into chloroplast and mitochondria respectively. And this is how a fully functional eukaryotic cell has come into the existence. 
having endosymbiotic hypothesis, the first event was nucleus formation, and this led to the uh, formation of a first cell that is called pro-eukaryotic cell because it is preliminary. It, that is why it's called pro-eukaryotic cell. The ancestral eukaryotic cell may have developed from the fusion of ancient bacteria and archaea. Uh, with time passes, the archaeal uh, cell has stopped performing individual entity and has um, converted into integrated part of the host in which it is staying. Possibly a gram-negative bacteria acted as a host cell and had lost its cell wall engulf an archaeon to form an endosymbiotic association and this is this could be the first step, step to form a pro-eukaryotic cell the archaeon subsequently lost its cell wall and plasma membrane while the host bacterium developed membrane in pulp that is membrane invagination in which it has encapsulated the archaea and the archaeal genome along with the bacterial genome fuses and converted into eukaryotic genome which has started working as a nuclei or nucleus independently. Eventually, the host genome was transferred to the original archaeon and the nucleus and the plasmic reticulum came into the existence. So this is how the membrane structure of a pre-eukaryotic cell has come into the existence. Then this cell has angled one photosynthetic bacteria and one aerobic bacteria inside it and they started staying as an endosymbiont in that large pro-eukaryotic cell. With time passes, these two individual organisms, they have lost their identity and confined into the world that is photosynthesis and respiration and they are uh, converted into chloroplast and mitochondria with time. So this is how a modern photosynthetic eukaryote and non-photosynthetic heterotrophic eukaryote came into the existence. The mitochondria and chloroplast appears to have developed after the development of nuclei and endoplasmic reticulum. The free living fermentative ancestral eukaryote with its nucleus establish a permanent symbiotic relationship with photosynthetic bacteria that has converted into chloroplast. The cyanobacteria have been considered most likely the ancestor of chloroplast. So it, it is a hypothesis or it is a speculation that the chloroplast is coming from the endosymbiotic cyanobacteria present in a large prokaryotic cell. So uh, the picture shows overall series of evolutionary steps from pro-eukaryotic or you can say ancestral prokaryotic cell to the fully evolved eukaryotic photosynthetic cell and uh, heterotrophic eukaryotic uh, cell where, which contain mitochondria and chloroplast. The theory is not so popular just because they are having a logical argument but there are certain evidences right now we have which support endosymbiotic theory. The first example is the organism that is called prochloron. Okay, the prochloron lives within a marine invertebrate and resemble to chloroplast in containing both chlorophyll A and B. It does not have phycobilin. The existence of this bacteria suggests that the chloroplast arose from common ancestor of prochlorophyte or you can say cyanobacteria. This is the current live example which we are seeing where an organism is living within the body of another organism and serving the same purpose which earlier endosymbiotic photosynthetic bacteria was performing. So the theory could be accepted well, I think. And this is the invertebrate which harbored the organism inside it. And here you can see that due to chlorophyll it is performing photosynthesis and providing nutrient to the organism in a low nutrient environment. Another uh, example of this endosymbiotic theory which is supported by uh, mutual understanding or mutual living 
is between the endosymbiotic cyanobacteria that inhibit biflagellate protease. The name of the protease is Cyanophora paradoxa. This is the protease pro pro which contain a cyanobacteria. The total combination of this two association, or you can say now it is considered as a one organism, that is called the CNLA. This CNLA has got two members. One is a protease and one is a cyanobacteria. This resembles to the cyanobacteria in its photosynthetic pigment system and the fine structure which is surrounded by a peptidoglycan layer. So you can say it has got almost all features of a bacteria. It differs from cyanobacteria in lacking the polysaccharide, lipopolysaccharide outer membrane which is a general characteristic of a gram-negative bacteria. Due to this endosymbiotic relationship, the organism must have lost that outer membrane. The cyanella may be a recently established endosymbiont that is evolving into the chloroplast. So uh, this is the structure of a protist which harbors the cyanobacteria inside it and they fulfill their individual requirement. Further support are also provided by the study of rRNA and which shows that the chloroplast and mitochondrial rRNA share similarity in structure and sequence with cyanobacteria. Uh, at present, both hypotheses have supported, but not a single hypothesis on its own proves the evolution. It is possible that new data may help to resolve the issue to everyone's satisfaction, but it takes time and research. However, this hypothesis concerns processes that occur in the distant class and cannot be directly observed because it's a long bet and um, we don't have enough fossil evidence to prove the hypothesis. Thus, a complete consensus on the matter may be never revealed or rich. It is just a matter of speculation uh, which can prove with time, hopefully. So this is the summary of the overall evolution of a fully functional eukaryotic cell with the two main important organelles that is called mitochondria and chloroplast coming from the endosymbiotic, photosynthetic and uh, aerobic bacteria. The hypothesis is supported by uh, the individual structure of two organelles because they are having their own DNA which is separate from genomic DNA of the eukaryotic cell. The DNA of mitochondria and chloroplast has structural similarity to bacterial genome rather than eukaryotic genome. They follow the protein synthesis process of a prokaryotic manner, not the eukaryotic manner. They don't have histone in their uh, genome which is present in the nucleus of the eukaryotic cell. The first amino acid which they use to start their polypeptide synthesis is formyl methionine. While in case of eukaryotic, it's just a methionine, so it is again an evidence. They have their own ribosome and they are of prokaryotic type that is 70S, while eukaryotic cytoplasm has 70S ribosome. Right? So this is how uh, the cell has got two different organelles and uh, found to be coming from the eukaryotic um, cell as an endosymbiont. So this is all about the uh, diversity of microorganisms coming from three different domains that is uh, bacteria, archaea and eukarya. And this is how the organelle of the eukaryote has evolved from a functional prokaryote. Thank you.